was rewarded with the throne. And when David felt his heart break, he could sing this song. Every need supplied, every moment satisfied, every time I call his name, I know I'll find him just the same. If you've gone out on a limb, Lord, your way it may seem dim. Don't give up and don't give in. Cast him all your care upon him. He said we could move mountains with faith of a mustard seed. So Have you ever felt the warmth of the sun after another long night was done and you opened your eyes to a brand new sunrise? God's faithfulness was there again. New mercy, new compassion. When you lost all hope, he never left you alone. Come on.
death of Christ on the cross. Amen. Glad he gave his life for me. He looked down on sinful, wicked man and thought they're worthy to die for. And I'll never understand it. I'll never be able to explain it. But I can't wait to spend an eternity thanking him for what he done on that cross. Somebody this morning with a word on your heart. Something you want to say or do at this time? Anything at all. That is good to us, amen. 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 Better than we could ever deserve. Somebody else with a word on your heart. Sister Tony. Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise Amen. you the Lord. It doesn't say think about praising him. It's a command to praise him. Why? Because he's worthy. A couple years ago at team camp, I believe Brother Andrew preached a message, no, Brother Tim preached a message on praising the Lord just because he's worthy. It don't matter how you feel. It don't matter what you're going through. He's still worthy to be praised. Somebody else this morning with a word on your heart. Amen. Somebody else? Sister Sheila? time of day he's available to be spoken to somebody else this morning sister Randy You know, sometimes in this life, we go through trials and we feel like, Lord, you're not even here. And he's there whether you feel him or not. But I'm especially thankful for those times where I can feel him standing next to me. Somebody else with a word on your heart this morning. All hearts free. Afraid to mind the Lord and uh, get in on the goodness of God while the getting's good. <coughs> Thank you, dear Lord, for being so good to me when I alone you took me in your sweet family you gave me new hope and said that I could live eternally 
and with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. And with all my heart, and with all my soul, thank you for Calvary and its treasures untold. Thank you for heaven fair and the beautiful place that you prepared me there and with all my heart I thank you. Life is full of snares. Life is full of snares. Trials seem so hard to bear. It's then that I reach for that hand. I know is always there finding he still cares I bow my head and I say this little prayer that with all my heart I thank you Lord and with all my heart and with all my soul I thank you for Calvary and its treasures untold thank you for heaven fair and the beautiful place that you've prepared me there and with all my heart I thank you Lord life is full of snares trials seem so hard to bear it's then that I reach for that hand I know is always there finding he still cares I bow my head and I say this little prayer with all my heart I thank you With all my heart, with all my soul, I thank you for Calvary and its treasures untold. Thank you for heaven fair and the beautiful place that you've prepared me there and with all my heart I thank you Lord Many souls have tested him throughout the course of time. So many still reach out to him with broken hearts and lives. Every one of them will say without exception that they find that Jesus never fails. 
Even in the days of old, he brought his people through. And then he came to show his love and died for me and you. Then he rose again to prove that every story had been true. That Jesus never fails. And I know Jesus never fails. My Jesus never fails. You might as well get thee behind me, Satan. You cannot prevail. Because Jesus never fails. Sometimes this life brings troubles I find so hard to bear. I know I could not make it without Jesus being there. It's so encouraging to know however deep you are in despair that Jesus never fails. So what can I do to prove to you? Tell me how could you deny there's no untold facts no mysteries, it's all so cut and dry. And on the witness stand of your life, I'll be the first to testify that Jesus never fails. And I know Jesus never fails. My Jesus never fails you might as well get thee behind me Satan you cannot prevail because Jesus never fails sometimes this life brings troubles I find so hard to bear I know I could not make it without Jesus being there. It's so encouraging to know however deep you are in despair that Jesus never fails. So what can I do to prove to you? Tell me how could you deny there's no untold facts no mysteries, it's all so cut and dry. And on the witness stand of your life, I'll be the first to testify. My Jesus never fails. And I know Jesus never fails. My Jesus never fails. You might as well get thee behind me, Satan. You cannot prevail because Jesus never fails. You might as well get thee behind me, Satan. You cannot prevail because Jesus never fails. glad he's never failed me amen I could make a list of people and things and places that have failed me one name you'll never find on that list is Jesus amen not a single time not a single trial he's been there every step of the way And I've done a whole lot of things to make you not want to love me. But the book of Lamentations says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. If anybody treated me the way I've treated the Lord, I wouldn't want to have nothing to do with them. But it's His mercies 
that are due every morning. As unworthy, as unfit, and undeserved as I am. They're due every morning. And that's not just to me. That's to each and every one of you as well. I'm glad he never fails. Somebody this morning with a word on your heart. Bible says he is mindful of us. And Brother Tony gave the picture. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's footstool. And Jesus is in heaven with his feet on the earth. And he bends over and he pushes the planets out of the way. Pushes the stars out of the way. Hallelujah. He looks at what his feet are sitting on. Not only that, but he gets down right next to it. And he's mindful not just of the human race, not just of Grace Baptist Church, but of Zach Berry. And he can get right now next to me. What is man? What is man that thou were mindful of us? We don't deserve it. We're not worthy of it. But he's mindful of us. He's so much better to us than we deserve. I just love him this morning. Somebody else with a word on your heart. Somebody else this morning. Bible says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. There's no conditions to that. There's no, I'll never leave you, but if you follow this list of things on it, no, I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. I'm thankful for that today. Somebody else with a word on your heart this morning. Somebody else with a word this morning. All hearts free. Thank you. 
He's only just begun. Somebody else with a word on your heart this morning. Who's going to pray for that this morning? The Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. He cares about us this morning. He cares about what we care about. Somebody else this morning with a word on your heart. All hearts free? Amen. Amen. Somebody else. All right. <laughs> Real quick, like, grab your Bibles and turn to Psalms 113. Psalms 113. Um, we uh, we hear that are praising God I hope you know we're not just praising some mere mortal man and the expressions that you are experiencing here though they may be different you said brother Shirley I've not been in church for quite some time and heard people get loud like that or heard people shout or witnessed grown men shedding tears I'm not used to this type thing well friend what's crazy is that we witness people do those things for mere mortal man and think that that's normal what a day that we've arrived at where when grown men cry over the goodness of God, we think it's strange. How society has warped our comprehension of the way it should be, the way it ought to be, the way it, honestly, it is, whether we're used to it or not. In Psalms chapter 113, I hope that's what I told you, what I say? Psalms 113. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you some scripture today that I believe is just hand in hand perfect with what we've already got to experience. And I want to say that again. When we get the opportunity to commune in corporal worship and praise to God together, that is a privilege. Amen. That is 
we, we dare not take that for granted. Amen. And I want to commend the Lord and the Holy Spirit for finding us here in the middle of nowhere, Kentucky, at Grace Baptist. You say, finding us, Brother Cub, he knows where we are. Why? I know he does. But that's a miracle. That his presence would manifest here. Notice what the psalmist says. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. How many today can't honestly remember the last time they offered up a praise? This is a command. This is not a suggestion. This is not something that you have the right to choose. Yet so many refuse to be obedient to this command where the psalmist says, listen to me now, praise ye the Lord. This is a singular recipient. There is a singular recipient as to who is to receive praise. Yet we are so quick to praise self or praise somebody that we consider to be worthy of it, whoever or whatever that might be. The psalmist does not say, give praise to whom you see worthy. The psalmist tells us the only one that is worthy today. Amen. Amen. Says to praise him. As the pastor of this church, when I begin to seek the praise of myself over the praise of the Savior, we're in big trouble. It's not about me. It's not about who I am. This church and Christ and His gospel and His will will go farther than I could ever take it. He does not need me. He does not need you. Don't offer praise to anyone other than Him. There's a singular recipient. We see the servant's responsibility to this command of praise. It says, praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Of all the subjects of creation, should not the servants of the Most High God praise Him? We would consider ourselves servants. We would love to give ourselves that title. We we want to be a servant of the Most High God, but the question is, servant of God, are you praising Him? This is your responsibility. Hebrews 13 says, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. You say, Brother Caleb, I praise God, but I, I praise God, I praise Him my way. Well, what's interesting about that thought process is that God made that thought process null and void by giving us a perfect Bible. Amen. There in Hebrews 13, 15, he said to offer the sacrifice of praise to God. It's a sacrificial thing to do. You have to humiliate yourself. How many of y'all is listening to the preacher? In order to praise Him, you got to humiliate yourself. you got to say, listen to me now, you got to say, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I don't care how embarrassed my flesh is going to get. I don't care what people put into their thought process about the weirdness that I may be to them. I'm going to be obedient I'm going to sacrifice my image. I'm going to sacrifice my pride, fellas. Come on right there. Am I right about it? We men of the United States of America with our pride and our pomp, how dare anybody ever see us allow ourselves to be humiliated and yet the scripture says sacrifice yourself in order to praise Him. Listen to me. That is, he said, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. You say, I'll praise him how I want to. Well, the Bible told us how. To sacrifice yourself and to offer up 
The fruit of your lips, we talk about everything, don't we? We talk about things we have no idea about. We talk about things we have no idea about factually like we know them as well as any expert there is across the world. We run down our brothers and sisters. We run down those in authority over us. We use this mouth of ours for anything and everything and so many times we fail to say, I'm going to stop talking about anything and everything on this side of heaven and I'm going to start talking about how good God's been to me. I so appreciate Miss Tanya's testimony. Who's supposed to get praise for good tests? The doctor? All they did was give her the test. The food she's been consuming? What's she supposed to praise? She should praise the Lord and offer up. And I so appreciate her obedience in God's doing it. I appreciate Miss Brandy's obedience. She said, I've had a rough week and God's been with me through it all. We have it so stinking good. And we whine and we murmur and we complain about how much better we wish it would when there are people suffering that would give anything to do what you get to do. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants. A specific reservation, it says, to praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. This is a specific reservation. His name specifically should be praised. There's not another name. There's not another name ever been uttered worthy of praise. Did you hear what I said? There's not another name worthy to be praised. But His name His glorious name. That name, the Bible tells us, is a name like no other name under heaven. That name is a name that the Bible tells us the mere utterance of it and the trusting in it is sufficient to rescue a lost and dying soul from going to hell and can be therefore regenerated and changed and saved and made new and born again purely, listen to me, purely. By that name, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whose name should we praise other than this name? This is the command to praise. Then we see a clarification of his person. His elevated position in verse 4, The Lord is high above all nations. His glory above the heavens. His elevated position. His excluded peculiarity. Look at verse uh, verse 5. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high? He is alone, friend. (laughs) There is no rival to our God. He isn't like anyone. No, no. Listen. His qualities, his attributes didn't come from someone else. If someone has a good attribute, they got it from him. Amen. (laughs) He's not like anybody else. No, anybody that's similar to him is like him. That's our God. The Bible said in Psalm 89, 6, For who in heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? Friend, there is none like Him. None. That's our God. This is the clarification of who He is, His person, His elevated position, His excluded peculiarity, His exclaimed partnership. He called Him our God. That's a big time. The fact that we can 
listen to me, the fact that we can be associated with Him, the fact that He would allow us, let me say it like that, to be associated with Him. A wonderful picture that was painted this weekend was the fact that He would, he would care about us and we are, we are comparative to the sand of the sea. If we was to sit at the sand of the sea and look down at the sand next to us at seven billion specks of sand, there's no way anybody in here could hone their attention in on one single particle of sand. And God has honed in on every single person across the world and would allow that speck of dirt to say, that's my God. This is, this is Him. He's unlike anybody else. And friend, He's the one that accomplished the task that we might bear witness with Him and, and be a part of His life. Matthew 27 is where we read about how that Christ died on the cross, His body being the veil, and in the temple, the Bible said, he said, Jesus said, it is finished. And immediately in the temple, the veil was rent in twain. And it rent from top to bottom, not bottom to top. Why? Because God's the one that tore the veil, preventing you and me from communing and experiencing Him, and ripped that open so that we might step into the holiest of all, so that we might commune this morning at Grace Baptist Church. This might as well be a sanctuary of the temple of God because the Holy Spirit is here. Amen. <laughs> in that Old Testament, they could only send one in. He had to have sacrifices done. They'd tie a rope to him and bells on the bottom of his garment in case the, in case the God of heaven killed him because he was unfit to be in there so that they could drag him out without having to die themselves. And this morning, I see on the altar specks of tears where God is communing <laughs> and has given us a right to bow down and say, Oh, my God, He is mine. How can I say such a thing? By His allowance and permission and by Him accomplishing that task of renting the veil. Look at the next verse. I'm almost done. Who humbleth himself, verse 6, who humbleth himself to behold, what's that mean, to look at? I didn't know this verse was in here. Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven. How often do we look at heaven like it's the summit of existence? And you know who God is? He's so high that he has to Amen. he has to humble himself just to look at heaven. Are y'all listening? But he doesn't just stop at heaven. You know, there are three heavens in the scripture. We have heaven where God dwells. We have heaven as far as outer space and the atmosphere. And then we have heaven, which is our sky. And God not only humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven, but the things that are in the earth. He humbles himself to Apparently to look at the angels whom he upholds, whom he admits to be in his presence, who are nothing in comparison of him. He humbles himself to look lower than this and behold the stars and the sun and the moon and the, the outer space of which he preserves 
and directs their course and continues their influence of bringing us light and brings out their host by number and calls them by their names. And because of his power, not one fails. He humbles himself to look at the stars. But thankfully, he looks lower still and beholds the things that are in heaven as far as our airy heaven. A meteor, a cloud that flies or the wind that blows, he observes them, he guides and directs them. Amen. What about the birds of the sky? You know, the Bible tells us there's not one sparrow that he's not familiar with. And he humbles himself to do so. He feeds them. He takes care of them. The wild beasts of the field, the cattle, the fowls of the mountains. But what about the children of men? I thought about this perfect world that God had once created, how that there was a race, there was a species that ruined it. And that species was our species. Mankind, God, gave the keys to the dominion of this world. And what did man do? They tainted this world with their sin. And God, listen, lowered himself still to not only behold man, but to become a man. (laughs) To make himself of no reputation. To become very man in his nature. He humbled himself to come down to earth in human form and dwell among men and to ultimately become obedient to death. The death of the cross and be made sin and a curse for this people that ruined the whole thing in the beginning. Are y'all kidding me? This was a humiliation indeed. His exclaimed partnership, he humbled himself to even become part of our lives. And we see this in the completion of his power. We see the condescension in verse 6, how that he lowered himself. We see the construction in verse 7 and 8, how that he raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dung hill, that he may set him with princes, even the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. You know, in my reading Bible, I have written next to verse 9, tried and proven. Because we serve a real God who has presented himself in my life time and time again in spite of me. I've watched him move and change. What's the last four words of this chapter say? The same as the first four. Praise ye the Lord. I find it embarrassing to our species that we would be so glad to know that he would humiliate himself, that he would humble himself, if you will, for the purpose of looking not only at heaven, but beholding the earth. That God would be willing to humble himself enough, listen to me, to look at us. But we would not be willing to humble ourselves to praise him for it. I'll praise God my way. Well, see, you're not him. And he's already determined how he's to be praised. He said, you take that mouth of yours and you say thank you. You take those lips and you take that tongue and you form the words in your given language to express to him praise. Well, I'll not do it. That's a shame. That's a wicked shame. You say, well, Brother Shirley, I would do it, but I know I'm lost. 
There's no better praise than to praise Him in the reception of His gospel and His perfect Son. Christ has been lifted up so that you might receive Him. And Christ said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. This morning, my desire is to lift Him up. You don't get above Him. There is nothing, there is no one higher than Him. He dwells on high. The highest of high. He is so high that He has to lower Himself to look at heaven. And the things that are in heaven, those pearly gates where each gate is a pearl, that street of gold that is so pure in its gold that it's clear, a place that is perfect and without blemish is lower and so low that our God must humble Himself Amen. to view it. Amen. And who are we that we would not praise Him? Right. Who are we Amen. that we would not submit to His gospel and receive His Son as our Savior? Who are we that we would be so prideful to say, I will not bow my knee to Him? Friend, you will bow. How foolish would it be to wait till you get there to do it? You will bow. You will submit. You will acknowledge who He is for what He is and what He's done. Our great God. I, if only I could describe Him to you, I would. If only I could do justice to His elevation, I would. I'm thankful for a perfect Bible that gives us these things. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. It's been a good service. The Spirit of God has stirred and moved and the saints of God have been obedient and